Coming along. Oh, tonight we've got a weird one and a half. Oh, this is weirder than Ian Paisley mounting Delia Smith. This is, this is weirder than that. It all started when I read this um, article in Punch, right, that was written by David Shaler, the ex-MI5 guy. And he said that MI5 had a file on me. And my immediate reaction was, yeah! I am dangerous. I am a subversive. Ooh, watch my side. I'm a walking razor. <laughs> and then I read further and it said he is recorded as a Trotskyite sympathiser. I thought, Trot? Oh, for fuck's sake, look. He's recorded as a Trotskyite sympathiser. There are anarchist mates of mine who will grill me for days over this one. Mark, do you believe in the dictatorship of the proletariat? I fucking promise I don't. <laughs> So, phoned up David Shaler and had a little chat with him. And, I was, you know, quite an interesting chap. I had a little chat with him about five minutes before I had a chat with Mr Straw. Because we found out that Jack Straw was talking at a Freedom of Information <laughs> meeting. I don't know why. <laughs> and we thought, well, I want to find out about my file. I want to find out about the official secrets. So we quickly, as he was coming off stage, I thought, fuck it, go for it, we'll bum rush him. <laughs> Um, I was just wondering um, if you knew whether MI5 had any files on comedians or, or, or myself in particular. Um, and if you don't know the answer to that, I've got David Shaler on the end of the line here. I would I be breached? No, Thank but would I be in breach of national security and the official secrets acts if I ask him? And you, you will it be in breach of the injunction? You, you, you have to take uh, legal advice. On do, that. Do, you want to, do you want to have a chat with him well, at all? Well, thanks, right. I mean, he's just here on the end of the line. If you want to just sort of like say a quick hello to him, it's just. Excuse me. Oh, sorry there. Thank you. You don't want to say any security advice? No, right. So there we are. We had a go at getting to, to Uncle Jack over, you know, official secrets. And th there's a weird thing, because tonight's show is all about spies. And there's a weird thing about spies. The reality is, is they're civil servants. That's what they are. A lot of them do a lot of boring crap. They're just bureaucrats. They're civil servants. And in fact, there was a report published very recently by the Intelligence and Security Committee, which is the committee that oversees them. And a few bits of inf interesting information came out in it. Not much, but a few bits. I mean, it was brilliant because they said, in the interest of openness, the new openness, we will publish the expenditure for the various agencies over the years. They fucking blanked it all out. In the official report, there's fucking nothing there. And then you read a bit further on, it says, uh, the bill for MI5 building in Thames House, which is next to Millbank, um, the bill for the refurbishments, which is like, you know, tables, chairs, carpets, is going to come to £227 million. Pound for ta what table is worth two... Ah, well, it is a table, but you touch the button, it turns into a nuclear submarine, takes off as a helicopter. <laughs> and just, they're civil servants. £227 million, They should be using fucking Ikea. That's what they should be doing. Using, it's an intelligence test. If you can put it together, you join. That's what they should be doing. And so, anyway, we, we were just sort of, like, pottering around, doing our stuff. And we got another phone call from David Shaler. And he said, will you come to Paris and have a chat? And we said, yeah, lovely. So we went out there. And the thing about David, that I should explain just some of the things that he exposed. What he did was, he um, told about Madison and Straw's files. He told about the bugging of Gardner journalists. He revealed the plot to block Gaddafi, which was an illegal plot. They're supposed to seek the guidance of the Foreign Secretary, who's supposed to approve it. And if they don't, it's illegal. They're acting outside democratic, accountable guidelines. He alleges that what happened was that they actually tried to kill Gaddafi. They missed, killed six innocent people. So we're now looking at a legal plot that has murdered six people. This puts Malcolm Rifkin in the frame, Robin Cook in the frame. This puts Jack Straw in the frame, the Intelligence and Security Committee in the frame. This puts the Treasury Solicitor in the frame. This puts a whole load of people in a place they don't want to fucking be. So they decided to prosecute him. Under breach of the Official Secrets Act, they tried to extradite him from France. They failed. He now has to live in France in exile.
there are spies in Britain that the government know of, that MI5 know of, that yeah. you believe are not being prosecuted, but they know of it. That's right. I mean, there are many, many cases of people who are certainly suspected. There are some cases where, where there is very, very strong evidence of people having spied for the KGB in the past. It is people who did genuine damage to the security of the UK by passing defence secrets to the KGB. MI5 knows about these people, and yet these people were never prosecuted. Can you tell us if they're prominent people? One is a trade union leader, yeah. Trade union leader? From, from the 70s, from the 70s, yeah. Involved in sell it, uh, giving defence secrets to the KGB, for Polaris and so on. But right. also, he also received money off the KGB. Uh, but I don't know whether that money was his own personal reward or whether it was to kind of fund the revolution in Britain. He certainly received money as well. You wrote to Jack Straw saying you had this information. Yeah. Uh, and I said to him basically that I had, I had evidence of crime and um, that obviously he didn't take my information. It would be um, neg negligence on the part of the government because they have, a, you know, they have a duty to investigate crime. So can you hand it in? I, I, well, I don't know whether I can hand it in or not. I mean, I've been advised by my lawyer not to go into the British Embassy compound in case I'm arrested. So you can't phone them and tell them. You can't fax them because they're not secure routes yep, for exactly. passing the information. You can't go in the embassy. So that's why I had to hand it over to you. OK, and I'll try and hand it in. OK. Brilliant. So anyway, I thought, look, this is top secret stuff. Right, this is, this is official secret stuff, you know. It can't fall into the enemy hands. So I took along with me a, a small bodyguard of four French acrobats. <laughs> no, there's a reason for this. There's a reason for this. It's because if you've ever seen Diamonds Are Forever, Sean Connery nearly gets kicked fuck out of by Bambi and Thumper, <laughs> the flick-flacking ninja queens. Channel 4. I'm delivering this form uh, to David for David Shaler. It's expected. He's, got, he's written to Jack Straw, the Home Secretary. So it is expected. <laughs> I can't believe it. We've just dropped this top secret envelope with names that we should not see. I've just dropped it on the floor. <laughs> Are you Ken of Flarty? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes. Sir. Can I have, just have a look? Because this is only for him. Have you got any ID? Um, ordinary and driving license. Excellent, lovely. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. These are the names of the and details of two spies mm -hmm. um, that David has, has talked through. He's outside if you want a word with him. Mm -hmm. uh, not particularly. Uh, do we get a receipt? Have you got uh, a receipt? No. no. If we have any comments on it, no, all I want is, is that you've received, uh, just a notification that you've received it. Well, I suppose we're filming you, so that's all right. Yeah, that's, that's fine, isn't it? We don't need a receipt. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much for your help. We really do appreciate that. We'll just clear, sweep the area outside, make sure it's all clean. Just have a quick check. Anything suspicious, my boys will take them out, OK? I've dropped the letter on the floor. The, the, the documents came out of the envelope on the floor of the Paris Embassy. I am with my four circus ninjas who are all surrounding me, and I don't know if they have seen anything which may break the Official Secrets Act. I don't know. I can't ask them either. Because if I ask them what they saw in the letter, then I'm enticing them to break the Official Secrets Act. If they tell me, then they've broken it for the second time. And if I listen to their answer, then I've broken it by hearing it. <laughs> I thought we can't have four French tumblers running around who could possibly know information about spies in Britain. This is an outrage. I thought it was my duty to go and report them. And so what I did at great personal expense, we bought the French tumblers back to Britain, right, so we could go to MI5, <laughs> right, so we could be debriefed. there. 
What happened was, I was delivering a, a letter from uh, David Shaler. So I handed it in with these guys yesterday, okay? And um, what happened was, in the process of handing it in, there's a, there's a bit of a kerfuffle, and the letter fell out onto the floor, and we suspect that some of the guys actually saw the contents of the letter. Now, if they saw the contents of the letter, that, that could be a breach of the official secrets act. Oh, we've set off an alarm. Oh, blimey, what have we done? The alarm, the alarm status is black special. Did you see that atrium there that they were, that they were doing their tumbling in? Where was the furniture? <laughs> 227 million quid's worth and it's not fucking there? MI5 have been ripped off by a conspiracy of Japanese minimalists. <laughs> Secondly, I've got to write to Jack Straw because in the security guard box there's a little quiz shield for the, for the pub quizzes. And on the, the award winners it says sort of like the Vauxhall Victors, the Inquisitors, T2 Division, and it tells you when they won the, the interdepartment quiz. Right, now these are divisions with MI5 and MI6. Now I've got to write to Jack Straw because you can't leave that kind of stuff lying around for anyone to see. <laughs> if an enemy agent walks in there and sees who is winning the quiz cup, they can make a deduction of the status of intelligence within the divisions. <laughs> yeah, because they might see Vauxhall Victors, they think, well, they've won, we won't fuck with them, we'll muck around with T2 because they didn't do so well this year. <laughs> so they told us, basically, look, you're ninja boys here. Right, if you know of a breach in the Official Secrets Act, you should report it to the police. And I was going, look, I don't know. I don't know if they have breached the Official Secrets Act. This is the whole problem with it all. So we thought, well, while we're in the area, we'll nip over to MI6. Now, obviously, they're a bit brighter in some aspects than MI5, because they'd actually won the quiz that year, if you look on the shield. <laughs> and they knew we were coming, so they put, they've shut all the outer gates on the walls outside the building. And they put security guards around there and the lights are flashing away. And so they knew that we wouldn't be able to film over the gate. Spot the cunning technique we used to film over the gate. You know, see, this, this is a, this is a surveillance operation. Hiya. Hello there. Hello there. Hiya. suggest that you move along. Right. Today we're just telling you to move along. Right. The people right. within the building, they're going to come out and tell you to move along with slightly more severity than us in a minute. Can you turn the camera off? Yeah, please. Oh, sorry, I thought it was a public property we're allowed to film okay, it. It is. Right, yeah. I, all right. I watch your programme on the TV. Oh, great, good. I have to say that I am a fan. Oh, great, lovely. Just at the moment, could you turn it off? Yeah, we're just about to go, actually, when you arrived. That's fine. We're, we're just leaving. There's not a problem, though, is there? I'm not prepared to discuss it on camera, so please lovely. Can you turn okay. it off. Lovely, OK. Once you've turned it all off. All right. All right, lovely, yeah. I'm allowed to let you ask, I will willingly discuss okay, it. OK, yeah. And you might recognise this man, he's the one from Channel 4 that does these. Oh, what have you got? Oh, you've got M&M's. Oh, lovely. Oh, excellent. Shall I pass them round? Oh, and... Why not? Look, well, look, well, look. Who's filming us? I know you. <laughs> no. look, are you going to film him filming us? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you should do. Film him. <laughs> Mark Thomas comedy what? Product. Oh, it's product now. We've taken the comedy bit out and it's only got one M. As in, a.k.a. Thorn in HM government side. It's a badge I wear with pride. <laughs> <laughs> So I phoned up. I thought the most sensible thing I can do is phone up the, the Home Office and try and find out. Because, you know, I'm duty-bound. I'm a moral citizen, right? So I, th I phoned up the Home Office and explained everything to them. And I said, look, you see, the problem is... The problem is, is that now they're back in France, we hear they're doing a show about David Shaler. <laughs> and what they're doing, we think they may be revealing the names of people they may or may not have seen on the floor of the Paris Embassy. Now, they do this thing called the spy, where someone flip-flaps into the, into the audience, grabs someone's handbag, goes through the contents, reveals it all to the audience, then passes it back. And when they ask for the spy, they've been shouting out the names of prominent British citizens. <laughs> what are we going to do? We have to stop this. They could be revealing the names of the British spies to the entire French circus-going public. <laughs> I said, uh, I'm, I'm happy to go to the police, and if you like, I'll even go on French television and say to them, these people don't know anything. 
if you think it will help security, I'll do that. Just give me a code. Give me a code. And I'll pick it up. And the person at the other end of the line at the home office said, we know your work, Mr. Thomas. <laughs> and uh, it's quite obvious that what you're trying to do is make the law look stupid. <laughs> well, I don't need much help in this case, do I? <laughs> I said, it's important, though, I find out. Should I report them to the police or not? Am I open to a legal charge if I don't? And what, what happens if I report them to the police? Said, well, if you report them to the police, what will happen is the special branch will investigate, and if, there are, if there's evidence there, they will seek the extradition of the four French tumblers. Now, I don't know how. I swear to God, I do not know how, but somehow this country is so riven with leaks, the next day... That story appears in the Guardian newspaper. <laughs> I, I don't know how. Look, you can see, I don't know how. They've mentioned the spies and everything. They know about the tumblers, for God's sake. They know about the tumblers. So the story's out there that we could be extraditing four French tumblers. And I, 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 I kind of went along to the Home Office the next day. And when I got down there, because of the article in the Guardian, there was, a, there was an organised, spontaneous demonstration by circus performers from all over the world. <laughs> in protest of their colleagues who are about to be extradited from France to Britain. Free the French for! I go inside, okay, to the Home Office, and the bloke on the door says, right, three of you are allowed in. And I said, all right, but I'm not really with them. He goes, no, 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 three of them are allowed in, it's you and two others. I said, all right, I'll have the stilt walker <laughs> and the woman with the day glow spider wing things. And so they came in, and they... they the stilt walker and the woman with the wings decide to have a race up and down the office. And there's... <laughs> but there's a whole load of people on the balcony in the home office now who are beginning to look at the circus performers out through the window and they're going, what's going on? And I've had to say to them, look, this whole thing is happening with the French Thomas could be extradited to France and this whole thing with a legal nightmare has turned into a farce. And this woman leant over the balcony and just went, fairly usual behaviour for this place. <laughs> I said, do, 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 do you want to see the sword swallower? She said, yes, please. Get by the window. I can get a good view from here. <laughs> so then the police arrived. You ready? <laughs> oh, wow. That's quite impressive, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Look, and you can see the spit on it. I mean, that <laughs> went all the way. Shut your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> he thought, look, it's important we try and assess what the French tumblers have seen, right? So what I did was I said to the French tumblers, can you write out what you saw on the letters on the floor? But don't write it on papers. Don't write it on paper. No, 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 no. What we're going to do is we're going to give you sparklers, spell out what you saw in the air, <laughs> and then we can watch it back. And if we see a name emerging that we think we shouldn't see, we'll just stop, we'll burn it, we'll run away. <laughs> so they did that, right? Now, we're going to show you the footage of this. Now, the thing about this footage is there's a thing called the D-Notice Committee. And the D-Notice Committee tell us what we can and can't show on television if it breaches or doesn't breach national security. Now, there's a man called Rear Admiral Paul Vertaft who runs it. It's completely true. And his deputy is called Commander Ponsonby. I swear to God. <laughs> Seriously. Grown men have sat around and watched this footage and thought, does this endanger British national security? Did anyone else see Dale Winton? <laughs> no? OK, probably just me then. We should get it through. Can I have the facts? The other day, they faxed through their response, OK, to my dilemma of what I should do over the tumblers. And the, it begins, Home Office statement in response to questions from Mark Thomas. Quote, Mark Thomas is a very talented comedian who is to be congratulated for his ingenuity and chutzpah. We look forward to seeing the programme in January they want me to go on French television. That's the code I've been waiting for. <laughs> so now I've got to go on French television and tell the, the people of France not to watch tumblers because they may reveal the names of two spies. The two spies that they may have seen the names of were from a letter in the Paris Embassy that fell on the floor because David Shaler knew the names, couldn't take them into the embassy because he'd be arrested. MI5 know them as well, but David's got to go and reinforce it. I dropped the letter. They might have seen it. We don't know. We can't check out. We go to MI5, we go to MI6. They don't know whether they can tell us or not. And all because of this, we may have to extradite these French spies. And now I've got to go on television to actually tell the people of France not to watch the tumblers. <laughs> oh, John Le Carre, where are you? Is... <laughs> if you think this is weird, then you compare it to what happened to David Shaler. He reveals 
that MI5, MI6 are out, acting out of control, acting illegally, and could have been part of a plot that resulted in the murder of six innocent people. And for that, he is arrested and prosecuted and lives in exile in France. Now, you would have thought if you phoned up Crime Stoppers and said, I know of a murder, they'd go, great, come and talk to us, we'll try and sort it out. They wouldn't go, right, we're going to nick you. <laughs> so it's, it just gets weird. And the thing is, there's a thing called the Intelligence and Security Committee, and their job is to oversee the security forces. They will not accept David's evidence. They won't hear his evidence. They won't even consider if it's true. And more than that, they won't even talk about David Shaler. In fact, the only one time that we've seen where one member of the committee talks about Shaler, he gets it wrong, and it's a man called Michael Mates, and this is what he said on French television. Well, I can't talk in detail about a particular case, uh, but he was dismissed from his job, and he has had a grievance since then. This is a sworn deposition from Martin Morrissey from a special branch submission to a French court on Shaler's court case to extradite him. And under oath, he says, following his resignation... He signed a further declaration in the same terms on the 27th of September. Shaler resigned. He was not sacked. They can't even get the facts right. And when you start to look at all, this, all the people who are prosecuted under the Official Secrets Act and all those who aren't, you start to get this very weird picture building up. You start, if you look at the people who have been prosecuted, people like um, Ponting, Tisdale, you know, David Shaler, they've all revealed things that have embarrassed the government or the security forces. If you look at the people who haven't been prosecuted... Then you look at people like you look at people like Tom Boyer, who wrote a book about Sir Dick White with breaches, the Official Secrets Act. Uh, you look at people like Nigel West, people like Rupert Allison, people like uh, Andy McNabb. They all potentially breached the Official Secrets Act. Nothing's done about them because that's nice breaches. So I thought, who can we take all our evidence to? Who's, is there anyone there who can help resolve this problem? And so what we did was we bust into the James Bond premier party. <laughs> Uh, well, we, we nicked somebody's tickets and, 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 and busked in. I, I actually went in as Mrs. Jonathan Ross. But, <laughs> so we sort of wandered around and we tried to see James Bond. We tried to see Piers Brosnan and present him with the facts. <laughs> right. I go up to Piers, say, Piers, mate, listen, I've got a little something for you. Dave, can we have security? Four blokes suddenly guard him, fucking kicked me out. I couldn't believe it. What a wimpy James Bond he is. <laughs> Wimpy toss bag. I can't believe it. And then we saw M, Judy Dench. And we went and gave Judy all our information. And if this is a stitch up, I'm after you. That's what she said. If this is a stitch up, I'm after you. I'm quite worried, obviously. <laughs> so that's where we are with it. Um, just before we go, I just wanted to say that. It's kind of weird because if you report a crime and then you're actually put in prison because of that, that strikes me as a major miscarriage of justice. And because David doesn't fall into the category of noble victim as the left would like to see their causes and campaigns, he isn't really being adopted by the left. Um, had he been a noble victim, they would have had his face on T-shirts and you know badges and all this kind of stuff. Um, I think it's one of the worst miscarriages of justice this decade. Thanks for coming, night night. From Russia with love I fly to you Much wiser since my goodbye to you With love